OK. Time to cover another tool used for website enumeration, which is called Derp. Now, this will be a rather quick video because this tool is not that big, but it is really useful. We use Derp to discover hidden directories on a website. Or you can also consider it as a tool that is used to brute force directory names and see whether certain directory names exist on a website or if they don't. Now, as with almost any other tool that we use, we can run Derb straight from our terminal. And to open the help menu, we can just type Derb, which will give us all of the available options that we can use with this tool. But since website enumeration is not our main part of the course, we really want to get straight into bug hunting. We'll just cover the basic of this tool, which you probably will always use like this. However, if you do want, check out all of the other options to see what else you can do with the derp tool. But for this video, what we want to do is we want to discover some hidden directories. And to do that, all we have to type is derp and then HTTP and then the IP address of our OWASP virtual machine. If we type it like this and press enter, it will start running without specifying any other option whatsoever. And you can see all of these output that we get are discovered directories on the website. Right here we can see how many generated words did the derp create, and all of these words will be tested out as a possible directory on this website. Straight away, we managed to find some of them. As we can see, we have slash assets on the website. We have CGI bin, we have cross domain. And if you're wondering what is this in the brackets, this simply just gives us the code. And as we already know, code 200 means that the page loaded successfully, which also means that the page exists on that website. If it were to get some other code resulting in an error, then the tool would probably determine that that page does not exist, so it doesn't print it out right here. Okay, so if we go all the way down, we can see that it already discovered a bunch of other directories, and what you would do is you would pretty much go through this and see whether you see anything interesting for us. For example, any administrator directory could possibly be interesting. Of course, if you find something that has passwords inside of its name, that would also be interesting because you never know what the website developer put there. Maybe they forgot to remove a certain directory from the test phase and they left it right there, which could possibly have perhaps the source code or some additional information such as users, or perhaps they made the entire database public. I mean, you never know, even though it is rare, it can and it does happen sometimes. So nonetheless, let's see to which point did this tool get. And it's still discovering directories, so I'm just going to stop this because I don't really need it to finish till the end. Instead, I also want to show you another option that you can do with derp. Since if you type a straight command like this, which is just derp and then the IP address over HTTP, it will use its usual list that it always uses. But what you can do is you can specify your own list right after the IP address, so you can do something like user share word lists, and this is the path to word lists in Kali Linux. So it's slash user, slash share, and then slash word lists. And if you want to see all of the options that you have inside of this word list directory, you can press tab twice, fast, and here you will be able to see all of these subdirectories to this word list directory. And since we are running derp, let's go to the derp subdirectory. And inside of the derp subdirectory, we have all of these txt files. And all of these txt files are certain lists. Let's go with common.txt, which I do believe is also ran by default, but nonetheless, let us just see how we can use a specified word list of our choice. And all you have to do is press enter. And it will pretty much do the same thing just with your word list instead. It will try to find all of those directories and it will print out the ones that exist. And if you wanted to, for example, make sure that a certain directory exists, what you can do is you can copy any of these directories. For example, let's go with this one, which is slash images. 
you can go to your Firefox and visit it like this. And we do see that images directory does exist on our OWASP virtual machine. You can do so with any other as well, such as for example, PHP my admin. Let's copy the link and let's paste it right here. And it also loads the PHP my admin login screen. Awesome. All we're left to do is cover two more important tools. In the next video, we will cover Nmap, which will pretty much be just the basics of Nmap because that is a huge tool. It has a bunch of options and we're not getting into details with Nmap. However, we will cover some of the basics of it in the next video. And then in the next section, we're going to dive deep into a tool called Burpsuit. Now, why are we going through all of these previous tools with only basic options and with Burpsuit, we're going to go with advanced options. Well, it's pretty simple. Burpsuit is a tool that you will use for bug bounty. Its main purpose is to actually use it for bug bounty. While as all of these tools that we covered by now, you can use if you like, but you don't really have to. It's pretty much your choice. Nonetheless, more about Burpsuit in the next section, and let's focus now on Nmap, which we will cover in the next video. See you there.